Today is Tuesday, September the 3rd. I'm Bruce Turner in Lynchburg, Virginia. I'm David Stavos in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. George Sasser, Jacksonville, Florida. Jeff Sias, Napa, California. I'm Robert Taylor in New Orleans, Louisiana. And on today's Tech and Coffee's Android Journal, over 1 billion served. Break me off a piece of that Android Kit Kat bar. Pictures of the Galaxy Gear smartwatch. Acer brings an all-in-one PC running Android. All of this, more, and our apps. Good evening, everyone. Evening. Evening. All right, still afternoon for you West Coasters. I apologize. Yeah, well, we should... it's kind of afternoon here, too. Let's do the brief uh, explanation why we're just not going to have the, the, the video real quick. Yeah, yeah. I want to apologize to uh, anyone that's looking for us on YouTube. Uh, Google's having some technical difficulties. I sent out a note this afternoon basically saying that uh, YouTube Live and Hangouts on Air might not work. And uh, I just want to say that we here at Android Journal have indeed confirmed that. So we're giving, we're going to bring you the audio portion of our podcast and uh uh yeah maybe you'll get video next week like i say if my mug's not on it and all it is is audio it's probably gonna be our best show ever hey guys before we get into uh tonight's topics i just want to say you know how uh how back in the day like if you went to a movie theater uh real quick they would flash up a frame you know that said eat popcorn And lo and behold, people would all of a sudden be hungry for popcorn. You know, I just want to say that that it still works because last week we were talking about, hey, you know, that Nexus 4 has dropped in price. I sure would like to have one. And I'll be a son of a gun if that daggone Dennis DeVoe didn't go and order a Nexus 4. Congratulations, Dennis. Yes, I did. It's still in shipping limbo. Like, I've got it shipped. So that's a good sign, but uh, it's somewhere between Illinois and here. So um, wherever it is, I want my Nexus. Okay. Just glad you ordered it when you did because they're all gone now. Well, the yeah. 8 gigabyte is. Is it 16? Gone? Yeah, right. yeah, the, the 8 gig. The 8 gig sold out. I saw that today. And, and Dennis, listen, man, I was giving you a hard time. I'm a little envious. Uh, nothing wrong with my note, but that is a tremendous buy on that device. If I needed one, I'd be jumping all over that deal. Yeah, man. So so does that mean I'm going to be one of the first to get uh, something that we're going to be talking about a bit later? Well, you know what, I I guess that is true as far as like our tech and coffee regulars. Is anybody sporting a Nexus 4? If it shows up in the mail. (laughs) Oh, good point. (laughs) (laughs) You see your friendly Canada Post uh, postal guy walking around with a brand new Nexus 4. You know, talking while he's delivering Mm. mail, but you never got yours. Yeah, that customs thing might not be working. I don't know. Is it true know. that I mean, Nexus are I delivered by uh, Royal Any Canadian reason. Mounties in full regalia? Yeah. Hmm. All of a sudden, an Android dig guy starts walking with the Nexus 4. I'm like, okay, that's my Nexus 4. Attack! No. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, Android is as big as McDonald's, man. They've had over 1 billion activations. I mean, uh, uh, that's incredible, is it not? Now that's that's not necessarily one billion users, but that that figures out to right at a million activations per day of Android devices. Uh, that's that, can, can anybody get wrap your heads around that and fathom that number? Now that's official. That's is that account all the little knockoffs and all those other things that you can buy, or is that just official Google stats? Well, uh, you know, Google servers are recording this, and uh, you know, I don't know uh, exactly what the definition of activations is, other than it's not necessarily an individual user. Okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I was just saying because you know you have. Uh, when you search through Amazon and say you're looking for, a, say, a Note, okay, so you're looking for an official Galaxy Note, but you look in the unlocked phones, well, not only do they show you the Note, but they show you these knockoffs of Notes Yeah. that that look all, I mean, they look identical to a Note. I'm, I'm, you know, they're definitely knockoffs, but they, uh, you know, like one-tenth of the price or something like that. And So I'm wondering if they count 
when you say activations, they count actual knockoffs. But, I, I don't but know. you know, it's 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 tablets and phones. You know, it's yeah. a combination, right? So but it's not what happens phone. if I install a custom ROM? Does it treat it as a separate activation when I sign into Google Services, or does it not? It's it's one of those things that's never really been clarified by Google. Agreed. Yeah, it could be. But even even if you're doing that twice a day, Dennis, don't you think that uh, one billion is a, is a lot? Yes. And yeah. I mean, I, a lot of Android users don't do the custom ROM thing. I mean, that's when um, you look at a site like XDA Developers and you think, oh, there's a lot of users here. But in the grand scheme of things, we're in the minority. How many yeah, do you... Yeah, and, and also the the idea, if I'm, I'm, I'm going on Google right now, I'm looking at my devices, and I think it has like four devices for me, right? And, uh, you know, I don't, I no longer have a Nexus 7. I don't have my HTC, my HTC incredible phone. I never deleted them off Google, right? So I wonder if they, how they do that. I, I would suspect that what they actually count for an activation is the activation of an MEID. I mean, every device is going to have a manufacturer equipment ID number to it, and that is what counts. Now, again, that phone might pass through two or three hands, like I hand my phone down to my wife. That doesn't count as another activation just because I factory reset it and hand it to my wife. That unit has already been activated. So I would doubt that that would count again in that number. Good point. Good point. Uh, anybody have uh, any uh, any feelings as for how many of those might be tablet, Android tablets? I'm asking. I don't have the answer. I'm asking. Well, it's, hard, it's hard to say because when you say activation, it, it may, makes me think that there's a data plan involved where um, I, I, I'd have to say a good 80% of the tablets out there, maybe 90%, and this is just a guess, are Wi-Fi only tablets that don't have any data plans attached to them, where you can get a Nexus or you can get uh, whatever you can get different devices that already have, like a, a you know something to put a, a SIM card in or something. To... Yeah, but once again, even with the, a Wi-Fi only device, you still have an MEID number, and that activation would count. Certainly, those tablets that are Wi-Fi only. Mm-hmm are going towards that activation the first time that they get logged into Google and recognized as an Android device. And that would even include, you know, Kindles and, and as, you know, those devices. They would be recognized because they're Android offshoots. They are, but do they, they don't really run the Google Play services. So it's, it's kind of hard to say about those ones, but it's, it's interesting nonetheless. I mean... It's a big number, that's for sure. A, a, a billion is a lot. It's a lot. I mean, you, know, you talk about a million activations per day, that's still pretty significant uh, as compared to, you know, other platforms that are available, Windows Phone, iPhone, etc. Well, Google I.O., uh, when, when did it take place? I can't remember now. Was it April or May? June, I think. <laughs> June. Nine hundred million is what they announced in June at Google I/O. So uh, they've added another hundred million since June. And uh, uh, guys, I t- I'll just tell you what, man, that's uh, that's rocking it. Hey, speaking of other uh, announcements today, we got the official name of uh, Google's next operating system. Give me a break. We all we we all just knew that it was going to be Key Lime Pie. That's even what the internal documents were saying, KLP. It's Kit Kat. Love it. <laughs> I, I've got I've got one thing for Google though. The slogan is break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar, not break YouTube and hangouts. <laughs> I hear you, man. Uh, you know, when when I first started seeing this uh, in Pulse News this afternoon from my phone, I really thought it was a joke. Uh, I I just, I, I didn't take it seriously. Uh, it appears to be real. 
it is Kit Kat. And, you know, I've never been a big fan of the Kit Kat candy bar. But if you've seen the Kit Kat YouTube video where Kit Kat basically mocks Apple and Johnny Ive, have you guys seen it? Yep. Hey, man, I I promise you guys, I'm going to buy a Kit Kat bar out of the vending machine tomorrow at work, okay? Uh, Does it have an NFC reader so you can buy it with your Nexus? Actually, uh, we're not that advanced. Yeah, man. But, uh, listen, I encourage you guys, head over to YouTube, because I think it works if you're not streaming live to it, and uh, just uh, search on KitKat, and you're going to see Android KitKat 4.4, the future of convectionary. And it is... Convectionary perfectionary, I think. It's hilarious. It's... uh, it's basically taking a Kit Kat candy bar, shaping it to look like Android, and talking about how awesome it is. Something that uh, Apple's really good at doing. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. I think uh, Kit Kat, we don't have any details as to what 4.4 Kit Kat is going to look like, however. So, but maybe if they're putting a Kit Kat bar on the lawn of Google, then this means that. Shortly after this, 4.4 is going to be releasing, and we'll be learning quite a bit about it. Well, I, I, I got to say this. I want you to think of any dessert that you can think of that begins with a K. It's key lime pie. That's yeah. what everybody – That that's the only thing you can come up with quickly off the top of your head. But I think the interesting thing about this is not just so much that they named it after a candy bar – but it's actually the, the trademark or the, the, the co-sponsoring of a product here. It's and my-, and my, my question would be, did Kit Kat slash Nestle somehow have to have some financial arrangement no, with Google? No money. Yeah, I've actually got the article pulled up here. No, um, no money so- involved. No money. It was just one of those things Google came up with, and then they contacted Nestle and just did a cold call. And the next day, they ironed out the deal. And this was actually done back in November of last year. So whoever was able to keep this under wraps, good job. Oh, it's an incredible uh, thing. thing. Even even if it would have leaked in November – I would have said, ah, there's, that's just, that's fallacy. There's nothing to that. Who who would be that stupid? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's probably, it's probably easy enough for them to create little, um, you know, Android figures out of Kit Kat bars versus a key lime pie. You know, it's like, oh, how about we make a key lime pie look like an Android? <laughs> yeah. You know? Actually, <laughs> actually, cool. though, actually, Robert, I can think of another dessert that starts with a K. All right. KY jelly beans. Oh, <laughs> I was thinking, wow. uh, I, I don't know. Uh, but that. bear in mind, Duke, they're saying that this is meant for everybody. That's the tagline of this one. So <laughs> I don't know about the KY jelly beans. Here. All right. All right, then. Hey, guys, we're going to be talking a whole lot about 4.4 Kit Kat as the weeks go by. Let's uh, let's move on and talk a little bit about uh the Galaxy Gear Watch. You know, uh, tomorrow, Samsung is going to be announcing the uh, the Note 3 and the uh, the Galaxy Gear Watch. And so, some pictures have leaked of it. And if we were live on air right now, I would be showing you the pictures. Guys, this thing is uh, not Ugly. exactly what I would call uh, slim. It's uh, pretty large. It looks like it's about a two and a half inch screen on a wrist. Uh, it looks like one of those ankle bra- bracelets that you use for prisoners. You know, they you know home uh, yep. confinement that they yeah. put on their ankles. It looks like that. Jeff, you would know that, what those look like too, wouldn't you? No, I saw that post and I cracked up because as soon as I saw that post about you know it looks like that, I'm going like, yeah, it really does. It, it does, and. Uh, it sounds like with uh, some of the leaks. By the way, this came from from uh, Venture Beat. I want to give them credit. And uh, 
a a journalist for Venture Beat was shown a video from Samsung and learned a little bit about the watch. It sounds like it is going to be geared a whole lot towards the uh, the fitness crowd. Nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, it uh, obviously is going to rely upon your smartphone and communicate with it. And uh, it's going to support Samsung's S voice commands, which I've used there. Okay. Uh, nothing to really get excited about. We still don't have a price point for this. We're going to learn much more about it tomorrow night. I don't want to beat this dead horse. I know we talked about it quite a bit last week, but now that we've seen pictures of it, I did want to give you, the panel, a chance to respond. It's ugly. It's ugly, ugly, ugly. And Three Dennis, and a half inch size, including the bezel. Are you kidding me? Three and a half inches on your wrist. I may as well put Velcro on my a Velcro strap on my smartphone and just put that on my wrist. Why not? You know, no. pretty much. That 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 that, that that's crazy. And it, and it's and insane. and Dennis, uh, I just want to say two things really quick. Uh, our listeners couldn't see you doing the thumbs down. And neither could our YouTube viewers because we're not live. So uh, Dennis has got both thumbs pointing down, uh, and he's staring at his crotch. I don't know why. And, Bruce, uh, more power to the Chromebook, man. Yeah. At the risk of offending dog owners, that thing is pug ugly. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and... You might as well wear your Chromebook on your head as to wear that blasted thing on your wrist. And, and Bruce, I'm just going to add, at at the risk of offending people with butts, it's butt ugly, too. (laughs) Mm. Yeah. The funny thing is, I wonder if it only works with, you know, other Samsung's devices. Uh, I hope it. I hope it does, Jeff. I hope it only works with Samsung devices, and it'll probably hurt sales of both phones and watches for Samsung. Uh, now, here's a que- here's the just a random prediction for you guys, uh, or question: Do you think that Apple is going to unveil an iWatch next week? Because we we've also got the big Apple announcement uh, a week from tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I, I hope they do. For a week from today. Uh, I, I really, I really kind of hope they do, Dennis. Uh, because, uh, man, this this Samsung watch, I'll tell you what's the truth. It better have features that they haven't come out with yet. Because uh, I just don't see much future in this, guys. I'm sorry. I agree. Mm. It doesn't look like anything what the, the original kind of guess of what it's going was going to look like with a kind of rounded um, screen around the wrist. You know, it looked kind of yeah. sexy. The other one, the well, first rendition, yeah. this thing looks so clunky. It looks like it looks like it's a it, it's some kind of you know prisoner device again. I go back to yeah. that. It doesn't yeah. look like it's called. They want their Dick Tracy watch back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Hey, man. I'm moving on to another hardware article here. I know we've mentioned this a time or two on Android. I've seen this. It looks like it's it's finally here. It's finally available. Acer has unveiled an all-in-one Android desktop. It's a 24-inch full HD display. And uh, I'll tell you what, guys. I'm liking the looks of this. I'm just telling you right now, I could see one of these in my future. This 24-inch gorgeous screen, the thing's running Android. Uh, my goodness gracious, you can connect it to a PC, you know, like a Windows 8 via HDMI port, US, uh, USB cable. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, man, uh, this has kind of got me excited. Guys, is, are, are we ready for Android PCs? I think we've been ready for them for a while. Um, uh, a lot of um, like Ubuntu and stuff have been pushing us in the direction of a a PC that's more like tablet style. I, I, 
I don't know. And, and, and as far as hooking it up into a Windows machine, I'm not too sure about that. <laughs> it would be a good standalone device itself. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, that, that's, that's a pretty decent idea. Um, it's kind of been around, man, because they, they, they did have the little netbooks for a while. And then when you got the Chrome OS now, which is all Linux-based, I mean, Linux is pushing out there. I mean, it, it is, I think nowadays it's more of a threat to, to Windows than it's ever been, really. I mean... Uh, you know, they could, uh, they could do something similar with, uh, with Chrome and, you know, make a, a touchscreen, uh, 24 inch, uh, all in one Chrome PC, uh, Bruce, being that you and I are now Chrome users, Robert, I know you, uh, you purchased one for your wife. Uh, would you go for something along that line, something with, a a two foot long screen that uh, you could set up, you know, on a on a kitchen counter, or what, would you rather have Chrome, or would you rather have an Android device doing that? Oh, well, you know, I, I'll jump in with this. Um, we were in a tech and coffee hangout uh, yesterday, I believe it was, and we were talking about, you know, the Chromebook versus the PC. And the more we look at it, the more we do online. Everything we do relates to online. With that thought there, my tablet does just about everything that I would want to do with it, um, except for large document or, or complex editing uh, of uh, documents. Give me an Android screen with a keyboard, I, I'm perfectly functional. There's no, there's nothing lacking by having that. I think the Android OS is an interesting point, but if this takes off, I would not be surprised to see Samsung and Acer come back with Chromebook, you know, models in in, in full desktop size, not just you know laptops but full desktop size. It's quite capable of functioning as an everyday PC for the average home user, no mm. doubt. Well, it's a combined device, too. When you look at it, like uh, companies like Samsung and stuff have been building TVs that are smart TVs, Panasonic, and they are all Linux-based. So all those little apps you play in there are running off, even though it's going to their app store to download, I don't know, the Amazon app or the... Uh, um, Netflix app or whatever. I mean, the underlying OS has always been Linux, but now you're just kind of turning it like, well, well, let's go one step further and, and make your entertainment center a a computer as well. Yeah, I, you know, I think it's great that they're, it's doing it. It just adds more competition to the marketplace, and then that it's going to make it. You know, when they, you know, Windows uh, PCs or laptops that with the Haswell processor that are beginning to come out now just have to be you know, price competitive, right? So now what do you do, right? You know, you get a, you know, uh, something that's, you know, more PC oriented, more Windows 8 oriented with a faster processor and uses less energy and, you know, um, it's, you know, smoother. Hmm. I, I, same, I, same cost, what would you do? And the price on this unit is, in this article, is showing at $566. For, for an everyday knock around PC for the house, you know that that's right in the ballpark. That that that's a decent price. Now, does it come with a keyboard or anything? I imagine an all-in-one PC. It's got to come with a keyboard and a mouse of some sort. I don't know that, but I'm assuming. It show it though. Well, here's the situation for me. I'm holding the Samsung Chromebook here, and if, mm. if when I went to the store. There was there was this with Chrome OS and an identically designed Samsung a laptop, this same form function form uh, form factor running Android. I guarantee you, I'd have brought the I'd have bought the Android version rather than the Chrome OS version. The reason being is there's just everything I need uh, to do more work is already available on Android. All all the Cisco products that I need to VPN in, Skype, Zoom, all of that's for Android. It's not available for the Chromebook. Now, the thing that's really going to help the Chromebook is the fully uh, rolled out WebRTC HTML5 apps. The closer we get to that, you're going to find that you're going to be able to do 
everything on the Chrome OS, just like you can do on Android now. Mm-hmm. All right, man. I'm still holding out for the Haswell. Uh, I'll tell you what. The rumor is pretty strong, Jeff, that we're going to see a Chromebook Pixel with a Haswell processor for under $1,000. I, I wouldn't doubt that. I, I mean, I, they've got to know that the Pixel's priced beyond what most people would be willing to pay for a PC, you know, a laptop PC. They know they got to bring the price down. Um to see it with a new Haswell processor below a thousand dollars, that does sound a little surprising to me, though. It's a it's a pretty strong rumor out there, and here again, you know, it might just be that a rumor, but it's being repeated off off often. Yeah, and and, and it, it, not to beat the Haswell drum, but I, I think Lenovo came out with a whole line of PCs yesterday based on the Haswell. Right. So. Which explains why, if you go to Best Buy or Office Depot or any of the Staples, and you're seeing the old processors, you know, we are hitting production now. The, the old PCs, I mean, you can pick them up for a song and a dance if you dare to, to be totally honest with you. Exactly. And, you know, you know, everyone's, you know, again, drums of war on, you know, Microsoft 8, you know, being not, not working, not, not having the sales. Um, who knows, right? Who knows? Yeah, All right, I mean, I'm, I'm done. All right. The one All right. quick hey. thing there is with the Haswell processors, of course, your battery life is going to be fairly good. I mean, just look at the MacBook Air. I mean, 13-inch MacBook Air, and you're seeing 10, 11, 12 hours of battery life on this thing, depending what you're doing. So putting something like Chrome OS on it, on a machine like that, I could just imagine the uh, battery life. Yeah, it's got to be sweet, man. Right. Hey, guys, there's been a leaked YouTube video, and if we were live right now, I, people could be looking at it. Uh, this looks pretty cool, man. This is a uh, the Sony QX lens. Basically, it looks like it works with your smartphone, but it works via, I'm, I'm guessing, Bluetooth. And basically what, uh, what you do is you can actually, you can, you can put it over the lens of your current camera. And it's a super zoom, okay? But you can also disconnect it from your camera and either via NFC or Bluetooth or somehow you can actually take the zoom and, and disconnect it from your camera. And then take the picture using your camera's viewfinder. Now, I don't know what the price is on this. Here again, this has been a leaked video. Maybe Sony leaked it themselves to create buzz. But this, depending on the price point, looks like something that I would own. I like taking pictures with my smartphone. I don't necessarily like carrying another camera. But I would probably be willing to carry an extra lens with my phone when it came to doing, you know, some better than smartphone technology. What do you guys think? I, I think this is fake. You like it, huh? I, no, I, th- I think it is totally, totally fake. Why would you have to shoot through the lens, hold it up to your phone, if you could then just point it? And snap a picture. That means it's got an oh, uh, image I, sensor inside of it. That that makes that makes no sense to me. Well, it that, could. I, I I think it's just relaying that whatever the camera is capturing to the phone, and then the it, that's why it's not. It doesn't need to be the, the camera. It's the the lens itself is the camera. And, that's where and, the, and, the, and, and the, the viewfinder, the viewfinder, it, the viewfinder is the phone. But but why did they show the guy? holding up, and even Duke, as he was going through the, the intro of the article, he's talking about holding the lens up to the lens of your phone. He's not, I, I, don't think no. he's, I, I don't think it's using the lens of the phone. It has nothing to no. do with holding it up to the lens of your phone. phone. It's yeah. just the back it, of the phone, so you're holding one device. You, you're, you're, you, you mount it. It's got a uh, – let, let me show you. I, I know our viewers can't see this. Uh, what did I do with it? 
the Iote clamp, how it holds a phone. This lens has something very similar to that that actually clamps to your phone to hold the lens against your phone, to give it something to hold. And look at right here. I, th- I really think that the, I think the, the phone is the viewfinder. It is. Yes, it is. the phone That's is the viewfinder. It, it communicates, I'm, I'm guessing, through Bluetooth. Uh, Robert, if you can see on what I'm sharing right here, uh, look okay. at that bottom picture. You see the lens on the phone? I got you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's just it's a way you can mount it to where it's more camera like in its in its form. But you don't have to use it connected to your phone to take a picture. Okay. What well, was kind of cool though, you could have you, know, you can put the camera the camera lens which is actually the camera away from probably up to you know, probably like the 10 to 20 feet, right? And then use Correct. the phone to to navigate it. And take a picture, or take a hopefully even though hopefully it takes video. That'd be very cool. Um, and that would be kind of that would be very interesting for people who are kind of doing, um, you know, uh, on-site interviews or something. They would be able to hold the smartphone, see the picture like they do with the Go GoPro remote, right? And but you you know you take if it's high definition, that'd be very cool. I don't know about the mic. And stuff like that, but that would it could be also very, lend very cool. itself to very voyeuristic shots as well. Exactly, I wasn't going there, Bruce, but you know, <laughs> I, I like the way you think. Mm, at the phone <laughs> shots, I could take them myself with yeah, that. I, it well, should be, but, but dude, Sorry. we've already had one famous person with a product in the shower. You don't need to be number two. I I promise. Or, or we don't want to see we don't want to see you going number two or either. You become so. more famous. <laughs> uh, I don't know. This to me, this really does seem like a niche kind of product. I mean, from what I gather, this thing is not going to be terribly cheap. Like I'm thinking, it's going to be at least five, six hundred dollars. Now, yeah, it may be a good lens, but is this really going to be better than than say just having a compact camera with a uh, iFi card or something like that? That's a, that's I don't a good know. question. That's a good question. I think it's a fair question. Would you would you give a three hundred and fifty dollars for a a good di- digital camera? Would you give four hundred dollars for it? Yeah. And I guess the next question is uh uh if if you like this product, how much are you willing to spend for it? Yeah, I think the price point has to be around two fifty, or it's you know it's going to be a tough sale. The only because you know. For example, my my wife has a Canon D80, whatever it is. I she never takes it out and takes pictures. She takes pictures with her iPhone, right? So um, I never, you know, it's it's just more convenient to break out your phone. You, you have to be a little more cognizant about carrying this extra lens a little bit. It's not it's not going to be too much, but you have to be going out to do a photo shoot to bring this thing with you, right? It can't just be that impromptu thing, right? that you do your phone for pictures. Well, impromptu will be handled by your phone, and the whole time you'll be saying, man, I wish I'd have brought my big fancy lens. I paid $500 for it. Exactly, right. Yeah, okay. I don't know. I'm going to stick with my Canon G12 and maybe the G16 that they just announced. Oh, oh you'll be taking – my. Uh, listen, this time next week you'll have taken at least two dozen photo spheres. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> All right. Hey, let's, uh, I think that's going to do it for this week's articles. Yeah, man. Uh, listen, tomorrow, Samsung's got a big announce- announcement. We're going to learn more about the Samsung Galaxy Gear Watch. We're going to learn more about the Galaxy Note 3. And hey, man, be tuning in to Android Journal next week because, uh, We'll be talking about those items for sure. And, uh, hey, man, let's move on to our apps. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go first this time. And I apologize that we don't have YouTube running of this, but uh, my app is one. I think I might have done this app early on when we first started Android Journal. 
And I know I've mentioned this on the podcast, Our Android Week, with Dan McDermott. Uh, Weatherbug Elite is my app. I really like it. Why do I like it? First of all, there is, uh, there's, a, there's all kinds of Android apps out there on the market. And I'm sorry, Android weather apps. And there's a lot of good ones. But some of the really more popular ones are very animated. And there's nothing wrong with animation. They're beautiful to look at. But if I want the weather, I don't want the weather. And it doesn't necessarily have to be pretty. And this is why I like Weatherbug. It gives me, at a moment's notice, current temperature, wind direction. Uh, one feature that I like about it, if there's lightning in my area, it notifies me that there's lightning in my area. And it will tell me from like 30 miles away to one mile away, there's lightning in my area. It's got an excellent animated weather map that shows me the weather that's coming and going. And it's not free. It's in the Play Store. It's $3. They do have a free version that does everything the paid version does. It just has some advertising on the bottom. So if you're looking for a very good, solid weather app, check out Weatherbug Elite. All right, man. Robert, I'm going to let you go next, man. Well, I don't have an app tonight, but I do have a rant about an app. Does that count, Duke? Listen, I told you apps, the the apps on this show can be something you love or it can be an app that you think sucks, and why does it suck? Well, I'm going to start with an app that I reviewed uh, about four or five weeks ago, Slacker Radio. And I really liked it, and the reason why I started using Slacker Radio is because Pandora put the 40-hour-a-month limit on their uh, stream. So it, it, it was something that I really did enjoy. I like the stations that I can get with Slacker, and it works great. But I still occasionally found myself going back to Pandora. Now here comes the rant. Has anybody noticed lately that Pandora has increased its advertisement count. Now you will get not one ad every couple of songs. They're now frequently doing two and three ads in between songs. This is quickly becoming just like FM radio, where you end up getting more and more advertisements. The pop-up ads now are more of a nuisance. You cannot dismiss them very well. I can't tell you how many times I've actually clicked on an ad. Congratulations to those advertisers for paying for me to hit the back button. But the end result is is that Pandora all of a sudden has decided they need to have more advertisement, which just solidifies my reasoning and my resolve to make Slacker my Internet radio on my Android device. Rant over. Thank you. Very good, Robert. All right, Jeff. You're up, man. All right. Well, actually, I do have an app, and again, I apologize that we can't see it because it's a very, very cool app. And for those of you who may know, I've been struggling playing guitar, and I started to take some lessons. And my music teacher, uh, Rob Michael, who's actually on Google+, um, turned me on to this uh, uh, app for Android, and it's also available for iOS called iRealB. And it's a music book play along, kind of like Garage in a Band type thing, where it plays the soundtracks of different types of music, like jazz, blues, gypsy, all these different iterations. You can change it to be in whatever key you want. There's, um, and there's a form that you could actually download more songs. And it allows you to change the tempo, uh, change the key, look at the annotations. Actually, if you pay it for it, it's a, it's a $10.99 app. I think for $4 more, it shows you the chord uh, fingering as the app is playing, which is kind of cool. Um, it, and it allows um, for you to transpose any, any, so- any song into a different key. And it also does the numbering system, too. So it works out really, really well. Um, 
what is cool about it, you can say how many times I wanted, you know, the reframe to go through. You can change the tempo of the song. You can change the um, the key of the song, and then you can downplay like the piano and um, drums, or just you know, bring up the bass or whatever you want to do, whatever instrument you're playing, so you can accompany the song and it helps you practice. Um, it's a great app. It's like eleven bucks, um, and it teaches you how to. Actually, because if you don't have anyone to practice with, so you just practice with this thing, and it keeps you, you know, a little bit more, in, um, you know, playing less and more, and make makes more sense when you're playing leads for for me for my guitar. So I really, really love this app, and it's like it's like eleven bucks, and it, it works great, it works absolutely great. And what's the name of the app again, Jeff? It's called I Real B. It's but it's on both iOS and Android. And um, it's, and maybe perhaps next week I can show it. Just should do a little kind of demo of it again, so you can see how really cool it is. Because it Absolutely. is very, very cool. Absolutely, be more than happy to it. That, uh, uh, that's definitely something that I would be interested in, as a you know, uh, being the professional musician that I am, and <laughs> and uh, yeah, like, walking yeah, with say, walking that on. walking that bass, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, George, what you got for us, big dog? Actually, I've, I've, I don't even have an app, but I have this really cool device I picked up. I picked up a bunch of different things from this company, but um, Target sells uh, a bunch of these things from uh, Quirky.com. And if you can go out to Quirky.com and buy these for like 5 or $6 each, and these are the coolest little devices. They go onto your headphones, because I'm always slinging my headphones around my neck. So if you can visualize me just slinging the headphones from my phone or whatever around my neck so as I'm talking to somebody, they're not dangling or hitting the floor. Well, these things literally just um, lock onto each headset. These are for the earbud headsets and just wrap around. They kind of look like one of those old eyeglass holders your teacher would wear. <laughs> Granny glass holders, Hold your yeah. headset in place. And if you go out to quirky.com, you'll see earbud holder. And uh, the really weird thing is they sell them for like five or six bucks up there. But if you go to Target, it's like five hundred dollars each. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. I should see if Target Canada has them. Yeah, I'll definitely well, look for those there. the next I'll time I'm in Target. To, our, uh, to Android Journal next week, guys. Well, I can I can see I can see Duke having these, um, and I bought a couple extra sets when I see you. But um, for you know when you're riding your bike and you can just go like that, and they're and they they have these little circles that hold them in place, and you can pull them out pretty easily. It's not going to rip your headphones apart. But um, and on the back they actually have the person who invented them, and submitted the invention. So huh. somebody by the name of Kim Rumberger invented them and it got voted on and who you know the, the, these are getting manufactured on the website there so um, you can see them on quirky.com if you wanted to or you could just buy them there if you can't find them at Target. very good man yeah i'll definitely check those out very good say uh dennis you're going to defer to next week huh uh no actually i do have an app that i can talk about here all right so man. you're up i've got a uh, accessory next week all right. So uh, the app I have, um, I don't know if anyone here in the room would be interested in this, but uh, I play a game on the Nintendo 3DS called Animal Crossing New Leaf. And if anyone has heard about that game, it's it, it's a strange game in that basically you run a town and it's a town full of animals and there's always things to collect. You can collect different fish, different bugs, furniture, everything like that. And it the thing is, it plays out in real time, so certain things you can only get in, say, September. And it can be tricky to find out what um, what items are available each month or even keeping track of what you've gotten and what you haven't. So there's one developer uh, from J. Rustin Apps, and it, the app is just called Animal Crossing New Leaf Guide. And surprisingly enough, it is a well-designed application for keeping track of all this stuff. And... Um, I've just been playing around with it the past few days because I'm hooked on this game. And for anyone with a Nintendo 3DS and Animal Crossing New Leaf, I'd highly recommend it. It's It, it pretty much follows your design guidelines even to the point of having the slide-out menu on the left. So 
it, it sounds bizarre, but honest, I'd recommend it, and it's free. Very good. And the name of that app again? It's uh, Animal Crossing New Leaf Guide, and it's J. Rustin Software. Or J. Rustin Apps, because there's a few that have tried to do this, but this is by far the best one that, that I've seen. Very good. All right, Bruce. All right. I want to say that the weather uh, bug app is one of my favorites. I cannot tell you how many times I've heard about a flight delay due to weather in Charlotte, which happens rather frequently in the summertime. I'm sitting in the Melbourne airport. I get out the weather bug app and I see exactly what the what the situation is. And I can either uh, get hope or not give hope, as the case may be. And I may show it to some passengers waiting around with me and say, hey, look, nothing to worry about. This is going to blow over pretty quick. Uh, I would like to say that Robert is a slacker. That's why he uses Slacker Radio. He's too cheap to pay $36 a year for Pandora 1 and get 192 kbps quality streaming. So I heartily recommend Pandora 1 to you. Um, uh, when uh, when Jeff said bring up the bus, he got points with our host, and George is the quirkiest person I know. And I couldn't think of anything funny to say about Dennis's app because I was too busy looking at the at this the quirky.com site. By the way, it's Q-U-I-R-K-Y, not K-I-E if you're interested. And those little things that uh, George has is called props. So that was pretty cool. So my app is uh, Dripler. I heard about this from one of our tech and coffee guys. Uh, Guy Cook, who is also the proud owner of a Samsung Galaxy Note 2. And uh, the app used to be just called Dripler. Now they have what they call the ultimately Ultimate Galaxy Note 2 app, the Ultimate Galaxy S3 app, the Ultimate Galaxy S4 app. And the cool thing about this is a couple times a day you'll get a drip. And the sound that it makes is actually the sound of a drip. And it, it it's the best way to keep up with anything news uh, news about uh, uh, apps, accessories, anything having to do cases, you know, with the Note 2. And I, I like it. So, uh, and, and it's it's a really good app. So if, if you're into the Samsung uh, arena, you might want to try one of those Dripler apps. And, Bruce, I think you like the Dripler app because you're such a drip. That's I, right. I, actually, actually, I've used Dripler, and I agree with you. It's uh it's really nice to get news specific to the device that you own or wish to own. And uh, I, I've used Drippler in the past. I don't currently have it installed, but I have used it in the past. And it's, uh, it's a really, really cool app. I agree with you. It's, uh, uh, but only, only if you are interested in news about your device. Yeah. Uh, all right. Hey, guys. I'm going to wrap it up here by saying, first of all, Tech News Week is Thursday night. Yours truly is going to host Thursday. Joseph Youssef has uh, some other obligations. And uh, since the, it's Thursday night, I'm sure that we're going to be talking about the Samsung Galaxy Note 3, the, the Samsung Galaxy Gear Watch. We're going to be uh, talking about uh, some Microsoft announcements, uh, both Steve Ballmer, the fact that uh, Microsoft purchased Nokia, and I'm going to be asking the panel to speculate, uh, you know, where that's going. Is this going to help or hurt Microsoft? So, yeah, man, we got a lot of things to cover. Uh, we also, uh, by the way, we're on Twitter. Follow us at Tech and Coffee one we're on Facebook. Follow us there at Tech and Coffee One. Our favorite social network is G+. Open up G+, search on Tech and Coffee, and look for that TNC Coffee Cup logo. Questions, comments, and snide remarks, toss them to AJ at techandcoffee.info. Hey, gang, you guys have a great rest of the week. We'll catch you in about seven. Peace out, everyone. Thank <music> you.